Candy wrappers on the bed sheet. Melted ice cream in my bowl. Down in chocolates by the dozen. A little sweetness for the soul. You know I got a sweet tooth Don't they say you are what you eat I'm not trying to come at you But I'd really like to unwrap you And see what makes you so sweet That special something that I need. No, no, no. You're giving me sugar high. Oh, I, I, oh, I just like everything that's so sweet. Baby, it's true. Guess that's why I like you. Sugar, tell me what you're thinking. Cause you're sour, then you're sweet. You're far too tempting confection. But I'm craving our connection, baby. There's something about it that makes me so weak. Oh. Trying to be a flirt, but I'm skipping right to dessert, babe. And that's just any treat would do. Cause there's nothing sweeter than you. Ooh, baby. You are candy to me. Mm -mm -mm. Got that special something that I need. Ooh, you're giving me sugar. Just like everything that's sweet It's true, I guess that's why I like you Oh, it's true, I guess that's why I like you Bam Bam <laughs> I like to get funky with it Beautiful Really, really beautiful. Thank you. Well, you guys, if you're listening in today, this is the cream-based bus, and this is the cream-based radio. I haven't quite figured out the name yet, but this will do for now. And cream stands for creative creamy. art and music. And everything in this bus is creamy. <laughs> Even our cats <laughs> love cream here. Mm. But we make sure on this show to host, I guess not just nomadic people, but that's kind of where we're at right now is finding nomadic people who are kick-ass in their craft, love what they do, and whether that be music or art. Um, uh, we had on Mitch Barr recently, who is uh, a funny. counselor for recovery, and so that was really great to have him on as well. And so today we have CJ Rislove. Uh, you can find any of his stuff on CJ is Love. On Instagram, mm -hmm. is there any other plugs you want to put in there? Not really. I mean, I I put I just put out a song. I saw this that last year. That's and that's under just my name, CJ Rislove. You can find that on Spotify, or Apple Music, or whatever. But that's the start to my my whole journey there. That's that's it. That's my first one. So hopefully, many more to come. But very very cool. Where did you record this? I recorded that song in Nashville. I took the bus all the way to Nashville, and I had a really really awesome producer friend of mine who 
just like totally free of charge, um, picked that song and, and just did all the way through with me. He laid down like the bass and some of the guitar and, uh, yeah, sounds great, but it was it was all done in Nashville. I just parked my bus in front of his place, and <laughs> we just got <laughs> to town and made it happen. That is literally the best part of being able to bring your home with yeah. you. You're like, well, I'm cozy. Yeah, let's, let's do this. <laughs> well, and, and my and I had days, right there. Yeah, seriously, I had days where I was like, not even. I was in the bus, just like recording whatever on my computer, and then I'd send it to him, and it's like. I just shoot him the email. It's like I never even – I would, wouldn't even see him that day. I'd just, like, email him a <laughs> file from my bus. So I've got to say that's definitely a plus of, like, th- this generation of music is being able to send and um, relay information so quickly. Yeah. As long as you trust really their, their software and stuff as well, you know, because sure. sometimes – um, I've noticed with people at podcasts or something, if someone's going live and it's a special guest or something, they might not have the aptitude or like uh, the equipment to have a professional audio and video on the other side of the screen. And you sure. kind of just are expecting them to, to have it all together. Uh, and they're like audio is crap. Yeah. And there's like, <laughs> I mean, you do what you got to do. Yeah, right. Exactly. And we all, we all like, I feel like, everyone always can like pool their equipment together it's like somebody's got it you're you're in like a big group of musicians it's like who's got this cable i need this adapter right right now. <laughs> somebody's got it <laughs> and I, I worked at guitar up. center for a while and yeah really? with some of the weirdest adapters but i always loved yeah. those questions they're like i have an issue and yeah like, how can i help how really like, specific what's, what's that thing I, I got you we're gonna find it today yeah, it was like yeah. that. It was like that at schoolie where they kept they kept being. We'd set up on the was a bus, and then they'd be like, "Hey, um, we we just really need we really need this to be plugged in right here, but it it it's a, a XLR out, but it needs to be quarter inch in. Does anybody have an XLR <laughs> to quarter inch cable? I'm like, yeah, I got one of those. Hell I'd yeah. walk all the way back to my bus. Hell yeah, but yeah, you make it happen. Everyone gets together. On the, and on that same topic of like everything being like accessible like that i was gonna say that not only is it like that where you know you can be sending emails and, like you people some pe- people like they produce all their music like fully online like they their producer and their sound engineers like in a different state they get it mixed and mastered like not even close to where they are which i really love but there's also like um the other point is just everything all the information being so accessible like you can learn anything about music these days just like on the internet but oh yeah it's I'm, all there i'm learning now that people that are putting together youtube videos if they forgot to get a shot there's like places they can go to get that shot they like you need an aerial drone footage oh, yeah. of like this castle then they just plug it in and it's like free videos Damn. of this stuff so they can like add it into their videos later whether or not they had a drone or not, there's like, so they can make their video into whatever and like sound effects is like nuts on YouTube videos. Like yeah, being true. able to get a typewriter or whatever really like adds that extra little glitter in what you got going on. The, um, yeah. what do we call it in the music world? This, this, the candy or something like this, ear candy. The Your little, candy, little like, yeah. chimes in the background. Like, oh, yeah. A little, that? like, like Jacob Collier putting, like, little bubble sounds in oh, his yeah. songs. Yeah. <laughs> that's good stuff. I love, I love him talking about that. He's like, yeah, I laid awake at night, and it was just, like, it was missing something. I didn't know what it was. And then I just I just had this epiphany, and it was it was a bubble sound. It's just like a... <laughs> <laughs> and he put that in his song, and he's like, oh, it's perfect. It's now. perfect. That's all I needed. I love it was that. a little, little pop. I got to get some, I got to get some, like, nomad little sounds in my like little bus starting up noises in my songs or something from now on gotta put little fun things in there like that i like that it's a good one i like that a lot so you say you only have the one song on spotify this is kind of the beginning of you promoting your music to the outside world yeah i mean and that and that song was really like I wrote that song about a friend of mine who died uh, right before I moved into the bus. And so that song wasn't even really supposed to be really like super monetized or anything. Like, I wasn't sure. really pushing that out for anything Definitely more in particular. Intimate. Yeah, it was just like I I wrote it and I ended up singing it at the funeral actually. But um, it was just like... It takes a strong strong heart to be able to sing. I mean, it was tough, that. but it's, it's just like it was for me and then i realized like people other people get things out of it too so i even had like a woman after i um 
I obviously won't say any names, but after that came out, she reached out to me and was like, hey, this meant, you know, because uh, some people who had actual people in their lives who like died, like friends and family and, and sure. whatever, they obviously they understand the whole feeling of the song and everything. But um, but I had a woman reach out to me who actually said like, hey, I just got out of like a I just got broken up with with a from a guy who dated for like five years. You know, I got out of like a long relationship and that and this song really like really affected me in that way and oh, i was yeah. amazed at that because that's like that's not that's totally a different thing but yeah, it's like yeah. everyone gets something different out of it like that that is totally a kind of a loss in that way like losing a relationship it's it feels like somebody you know dies to you and um so yeah everyone gets something out of it and i think that's i think that's really special um yeah and i'm, I'm really proud of that song but it was it was only it was just for me i wrote it i wrote it just as a way to like process my feelings and then beautiful um, and then it just kind of came to be what it is i had a demo for it obviously uh, that i had sent to like his family and everything and then and then that's why i did it at the funeral and then when i got to nashville my friend was asking me like what, what do you have for like demos like can i listen to some of them and that was like the first one he pulled out and he was like oh yeah i like this one let's just do this oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we just did it all the way through and it took like a couple months but yeah it, it was i mean great. it it's really well produced. I, I listened to it this morning. Well, I was thank like, you. I got to see what he's got going on. I love on. that. Like, <laughs> I had to get a little tea on you before we went in because oh, totally. we, we met at Schooly Palooza, but we didn't really have a whole lot of time to connect or like yeah. ask questions or get closer sure. and whatnot. And um, then, you know, a couple of days ago when I hit you up, I was like, I want to know all this information about this yeah. guy now, but I got to wait. I got to wait till we get on and yeah. really start doing this. So it's more organic when we get on here. There, we're two strangers getting getting to know each other sure, right now on, on this podcast it's beautiful really cool. that's what it's all about right here Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect yeah no that's a that's a that's a song you can't really like pull like people always want to be like oh like it's at like a party setting we're playing whatever everyone's drinking and it's like oh like you have a song out like let's put it on uh. like, oh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know this is really the place the time the place for that <laughs> You know, it's not not really. It's it's like maybe like lock yourself in your in your bus later and cry right. your eyes out. Yeah, yeah. It. I'm not a musician. No, I don't. I don't have any music. Don't know what you're talking about. That keyboard? No, no, no. That wasn't me. That I mean, I love me. people listening to it. Like I I love listening to that song. I it brings up a lot of emotions for me. It, it's, totally. It's and 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 there's I have a lot of sad songs. I write a lot of sad songs. I'm gonna be honest with you. And like I love that. I love sad music. But there is a time and a place for it. Like you can't you can't really be in like a big party uh everyone's trying to just have a good time and then you just play a total downer <laughs> like that and <laughs> totally, like, Damn. totally you know i i totally resonate with that i love to write so for me i love to write sad stuff yeah um but i love to listen to really upbeat stuff and i think that sure. there's a, a time and a place for both but what comes out of me is this like emotional sad boy and then what yeah. i what like to listen to to bring myself back to life again is like odessa or things <laughs> like that that are just like happy and go lucky like and free and things like that so um but definitely there's certain things in the music world that i think that you give to other people and there's something this that you receive and there's some things that you keep to yourself because they're really intimate yeah. and um so to c break out of that shell and sure. give something so intimate I mean, back to the world's really cool yeah because that's the thing is like i i'm trying to get to that point where i'm i'm not keeping anything for myself though because it's it's like even if it is like intimate and special for you and it's not like you don't really feel like you want to make a big production of it or whatever uh, i think this song is a perfect example of like well it the everyone gets you know there's you can you can learn from that you can you can feel from that like people like to embrace that intimate side too um like it, it makes people comfortable to know that there's other people being vulnerable and stuff out there so i i Absolutely. don't know i think that it's i'm i'd like to get to the point where i'm just i'm putting everything out i really want to start sharing more this year there was um one of my friends just recently was like after i had just done a show she was like man you're so you're so selfish keeping all those songs to yourself <laughs> damn it like give well, me some like of those getting like ready for this get knowing. those on my phone right, let me listen right, to that right. shit. <laughs> <laughs> like getting ready for this like you you know I, i've only seen the one song that you yeah. you know really put out but then and all of a sudden like, we're getting funky right <laughs> yeah so like all of a sudden i mean i see you look through your phone and you've got this list you're like 
these are my you know you've yeah. got a list of songs you're like okay I like I could put some of these together. Well, I, I love these I songs, have so. a lot I have to be honest with you I have I write a lot of songs I have and I said earlier too that like a lot of them end up going like kind of half finished mm-hmm. which is just how like because I I write a song there was a period of time where I was writing a song every single day holy shit and so it was about a year so I I have hundreds of songs seriously wow and then it switched to I felt like they all started to sound the same and it was it was like. I was I felt like I was just like wrung dry mm. and so I started switching to every other day and it's this writing technique I learned from a professor at Berkeley um where you do starting days and finishing days so on a starting day it's just like pure brainstorm mode any ideas you get you just like bam you like write them down you record them whatever you play them and you're just like not holding on to anything you just like you just like open the spigot and you let all ideas just like rush out of you. And then I just have like voice memos and I'm just like recording things and I'm going, I'm, I'm going, I'm going at it from all different directions. And I'm just like letting myself be crazy and be free. And then, so that's starting days. And so starting days are kind of chill. Like, and that's also the days that I'm like out living more. Like I'm outside of my bus, like hanging out with people and doing things and like getting ideas. And, uh, then, you take all those days, the next day on the finishing day, you take all those ideas from the starting day and you make one product with that. You make one, and for me, a song is a verse and chorus. So I'd write at least a verse and a chorus. And then sometimes if I'm inspired, I'd finish it all the way or I'd throw the bridge in or whatever I do. But it's like taking all those ideas where I was just crazy brainstorming and like putting some structure on it. And then you get one cohesive song out of that. And so starting days are for brainstorming, fin- er, finishing days are for um, finishing the song. And so every finishing day I'd have a song. So it switched to every other day. Now I'm on a three-day schedule <laughs> and I just switched nice. last month. That feels more manageable. I think, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, so I'm, I still think the song a day thing is great if you can do that. Like, I think it was really helpful for me for a while. Um, but the... Uh, so now I'm on a three day schedule. So I have starting days, um, finishing days and polishing days. Mm, definitely. And, and that's like, that's where it just like really hit for me. So I'm writing a song every three days. And then the other day I'm brainstorming, that's my starting day. And then the polishing day, I'm just taking all those songs that I, you know, maybe I only have a verse of chorus for it. I just finish it. I finish it all the way, finish it, finish it, you know, or I just practice songs that I already have, or I start putting in little licks, you know, I put in like whatever I need to do to like make it that extra, just like, I'm just, yeah, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm working on those songs. I'm making them, I'm making them better in any way I can. Mastering them. And and whether that's like reharming them or, you know, adding some like beat to it, or like I'm, I'm actually recording it and throwing it on logic. That's what I use. And then I'll, I'll like put some drums behind it or something like just like develop it a little bit more right um so they had those polishing days and those are great and then and then i feel like discipline to it like keeps me it's like i'm a very undisciplined person to be honest with you and that keeps me grounded that keeps me disciplined it keeps me like excited to do the work that i need to do you know it's hard as a musician to like keep yourself busy and keep yourself working because it's such like a you know, you can really, you're, you're, you're your own boss, you know, you do whatever you want. Right. So you have to like be inspired and be motivated to go out and like, oh, I'm going to call this place and ask to do gigs today or fuck, you know, and, and that's the, that's the thing that really does it for me is like having at least just one, one kind of discipline. And in my writing, I always think like if I get to the end of the day, I didn't make any money or accomplish anything great. As as long as I like, I, I, I worked on a song. Right, got I got better I at your craft. Song. Yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I did something, you know. It makes me feel good. I found it can be especially overwhelming when you're an independent artist. So, like, by yourself, sure. doing your thing. Um, a band is a little bit easier, I think, because you can kind of, like, when you yeah. find the right people, of course. Cause yeah, and that, you all encourage each other and inspire right. each other, which is great. Right. I haven't had the pleasure of traveling with a band yet, but no. <laughs> I imagine that that's killer. Yeah. <laughs> like, um... Well, I guess Fort Fort Vine, they're a um, yeah. duet, and they probably keep each other on their toes and keep Boy. each other. And those like couples that do it, I don't know. I've heard people say like, oh, I don't know if I could date another musician. Like, are you kidding me? I would love that. That'd be <laughs> great. That'd be so awesome because it, you hold each other accountable, and right. you're like, you like know how you like know each other so well. You just like really get in sync with each other when you're playing. 
and you just like have everything organized really well and you know what songs you're doing and like there's no there's no like stress of of how is this going to go it's like you know each other like you're probably talking about it right. all night it's the night before it did. that's it like <laughs> you're doing it to get like you are like one unit and i love that oh yeah i'm so inspired i'm jealous I'm, <laughs> quite frankly i'm jealous fort vine they're killer they our season killer. they're killer like they 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 all work together really well and i feel like having that person to like inspire you and, and push you to to you know get everything ready on time and, and get everything sounding good and and be be out chasing the dreams that you want you know i i love that i'm, yeah. I'm really really inspired by that he he's single is what he's saying yeah, yeah. so any fly honeys <laughs> any fly honeys out there that uh like jazz music Hell yeah. your guy it's i feel like it, with the jazz it's definitely like it's it's classy for like a nomadic life. Jazz jazz music's pretty damn classy. It, yeah, absolutely, it's classy. Yeah, I I have we had one day at schoolie where we had a uh, cigar day, which was <laughs> awesome because my bus is called the Jazz Wagon. That's what I call it, and it's it kind of has like a like a smoky jazz bar, like speakeasy type vibe in there. It definitely does. Where it's like there's like a record player in the back. There's all these different like posters of the greats, like the jazz greats. And there's like, uh, you know, my instruments all around and it just feels like cozy. There's like, there's not that much light coming in because I deleted all the windows. And so we had one day at schoolie where it was just cigar day. I dressed up in like, like three piece suit. You know, I have I, my collar, my collar like undone a little bit. And we're all in there smoking cigars. We had little snifter glasses. Oh, it, was, it was gassed we had out. dessert wine. Yeah, it was killer. <laughs> a little dessert wine and these little snifter glasses. And but that's what you wanted from the jazz wagon. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to and have that because there's so many like party buses out there, and I love that too. But this is like this is supposed to be like a super like chill, classy. But I had the record player going. Donny Hathaway on there. It was good. It was very good. I love cigars too. I, I'm also a big pipe smoker, so oh, I smoke gosh. my pipe a little bit. <laughs> it was nice. I, 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 when I got into the music world, I definitely wanted to be more of a daytime musician. I definitely didn't yeah. um, have the, the drive to go out and play 3 a.m. shows or whatever. Sure. So, w- when creating this, I knew recording was definitely the way for me because I can do that during the day and feel inspired to do stuff like that during the day without doing the performance thing so much i'm feeling inspired right now i could i could go climb a mountain i think well (laughs) let's let's get you playing a couple more songs maybe okay want to do that yeah i can do it's not climbing a mountain but maybe you have a song Uh, called climbing a mountain (laughs) (laughs) i have (laughs) a i I got really into poetry (laughs) i started writing uh writing poetry uh recently uh, which is just like songwriting without the music, I guess, okay. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I wrote a poem about climbing a mountain. I, I've heard them uh, called musoems before. Musoems? Like, uh, it's like a poem, but not really. You know what I really like is people who do like not quite slam poetry. Like sometimes I think the cadence of slam poetry is a little bit jarring for me, but just like reading your poetry in like a natural voice and having like m- nice music playing behind it. Like sometimes, like I did, I at one of the open mics at Schoolie, I just like, um, I played uh, for a woman that just like read her poem, and I just like played, like nice, like you know, nice little stuff underneath it. What, it was just what like, was that? What was that girl's name? Do you remember? We I, I do. do remember that. I do. I do remember her name. I swear to God, it's just escaping me right now. Ask me in fifteen minutes. I swear I will remember. I got you. <laughs> it's oh wait. Uh, uh, okay, never mind. I, I it'll come to me though. I swear, <laughs> I'm really good with names. I promise. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna play a song. Take it away. And think about that. Um, yeah, here we go. I'm gonna pull up my ukulele. Uh. claim to be the one You should know that I'm around to catch you when you're falling down Nothing's ever really done Your hand slips when you fill my cup and I'm so quick just to give it up But I see it at full 
so do you Well I killed a plan once Cause I gave it too much water in our world Love this violence Hurry, don't miss my sense Give me one more, two more, baby What are you a fool for? supposed to go from here I will leave the ring alone You can call me if you want to I don't mind it if you wake me Take a while for sleep to take me And I don't care where you are Better not leave yourself behind Ooh. I'm not feeling very brave When you call me up and you talk like that A couple hours in a play doesn't seem so bad But why are you so damn far away? Since where we're supposed to be So I just do what feels right to me But I'm thirsty for the truth and so are you Well I burn my house down Cause I can't stop buying candles in our worry Love does hurt me, fool me, blind me, burn me I'm on speed dial for a while if you need to If I need you I don't know where I'm supposed to go from here I will leave the ring on You can call me if you want to I don't mind it if you wake me Take a while for sleep to take me And I don't care what you are Just don't leave yourself behind Call me if you want to I don't mind it if you wake me Take a while for sleep to take me And I don't care where you are You better not leave yourself Go everybody. That one's called Ringer. It's called Ringer. Ringer. I will leave my ringer on. True story. I leave my ringer on every single night because I, you never know if somebody like really needs to call you. And some people say like, oh, I'm, it's my sleepy time. Like I'm going, I'm gonna be asleep. I don't, I don't care. Like if somebody calls me at three in the morning, like, no, I'm gonna be asleep. But I just have this weird, like, feeling, like, man, if, you know, imagine, like, somebody calls you at 2 in the morning, you wake up in the morning, you see a phone call at 2 in the morning, mm -hmm. and then, like, your friend goes out, and right after he calls you and you didn't pick up, he just goes out and, like, does something really bad, you know, 
And so I never, I never want that to happen. I think if, if somebody needs to talk, I'll always give them a place to talk. Uh, I don't care if it's three in the morning. So if it wasn't for debt, debt collectors, I'd probably keep my phone on <laughs> all the time too. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, my, my bank calls me every day too. I just, I <laughs> Stay down there. Cool. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah, no, I always, I always keep my, um, I, I always keep my phone on every night. And so I have had moments too where people call me and they're just like, I, I have friends that I haven't talked to in like years, but I'm, I'm big on the phone. I talk on the phone every single day. I love talking to people on the phone. And so I have friends that haven't called me in years and they'll just like hit me up and, and you know, I'll, I'll be like, hi, you know, how's <laughs> it going? And it's always like. Hey, I just had like a really hard day and I just need somebody to talk to or, or I'm just checking in on you and I I think that I think that we should do that more often where where you like you need to talk and you just do it. Like call somebody up. Like right. I think people are like weird these days about talking on the phone. And it's an instantaneous thing too cuz yeah. it'll get the idea but you won't do it. And yeah. uh, Danielle is actually really good at helping good. me when I'm like, "Man, I should call her." She's like, "Do it." Call yeah. Call them like right now. Like no stop. It. Yeah, somebody <laughs> said that to me earlier too. Stop saying I should or I yeah. want to. Like just like remove that from your vocabulary and just like do those things. Right. You like, know. When or just like make the plans. Just get started. Have you ever heard a, a, a somebody who smokes weed be like, "Oh, sorry, I just smoked. I can't do that." <laughs> there, you've got to stop saying that. Like you smoke every day yeah. of your life. You cannot stop that from <laughs> okay, being the now, reason. Now that we got on this, <laughs> that, on this topic, I, I I don't smoke anymore. I used to. Uh, it's like a very, very occasional thing for me. And I stopped because I realized that I just like wasn't my best self when I was high. And uh, it was actually an old girlfriend that I had that um, she broke up with me. And she she didn't say for any particular reason, but I knew it was okay, because okay. I was high all the time. Oh, shit. And <laughs> I I remember having this argument with her one time where I was like, Yo, I'm seriously so sorry I did that shit, but like, I, you know, that wasn't me, right? Like, I I would never do but that. But if you're doing it all the time, I would never do that if it was like sober CJ. I was just high CJ, and she's like, "Yeah, but you you are high CJ. Yeah, like you are high CJ right now. You were high CJ yesterday. You were high CJ the day before. Like, you are high CJ if you're smoking all the time. Yeah, and that." <sighs> That got to me. I, <laughs> I quit for like 18 months after Holy that. Shit. I was like, damn, I'm going to find right. out who Sober CJ is. Yeah, I'm exactly. Because that's that important. Is. That totally. is so important. Like, and, and there's nothing, I have nothing against it either. I think it's, it's, it's a beautiful uh, drug. I think it helps a lot of people for pain. I have a friend with Crohn's disease that, that it really is helpful for him. And it's like, I think it's beautiful, but I don't feel like my best self, especially like productivity wise like sure, I'm, especially if you're trying, trying to make a song a day or every three days yeah that's what i'm saying your, so all of your songs are gonna sometimes be about if i'm a little <laughs> if i'm a little bit i'm a little bit stoned like i i've had songs where i'm playing them i'm playing them very like square mm -hmm. and i'll get just like i'll just take like a little baby like a little sip a little sip of the bong a little you know and I'll get a little sip in, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm getting more expressive with it. And I think that that's something you can also really learn from it. Like, just right now, you knew what square meant to you when you were going to play square, and then you thought about Pi CJ, what he would do, you know? Yeah. So you can kind of learn from it and take it Absolutely. back and use that during the, the sober, sober time as well. Absolutely. No, I think, that's, I think that's a good way to put it. I, I think it's just, like, about slowing down a little mm. bit. Like, I, especially in music, I think, like, there is music in the silence. I think Eric Whitaker said that. Um, Beethoven said that. Like, it was, like, there is a rest is, like, you play that with your... Right, it's part you know, of it's the like song. It's like a breath. It's mm -hmm. it's like alive, and I I love that. You do have to kind of slow down sometimes in life, and just like ah, deep breath. Like, where am I at? You know, you just like get kind of grounded, and then you come back at it. And in music, especially, I think that that's like playing with like tempo rubato, like slowing it down a little bit, and like 
more free form and like people play with a click all the time and they mm-hmm. want everything to be like a grid. Jacob Collier said one time, humans are the least grid based creatures. You know, we, we don't fit on a grid. It's like, it's just, it's just wrong. Like we're fluid and we're moving and right. you have to like, you have to breathe with it. You have to, you have to let it live a little bit. I found that especially, you know, we haven't been on the road very, very much. We, we, built this out in this bus out in Asheville, north carolina and we spent seven or eight months doing it and um it sat on my grandpa's yard for a while and while we were doing that and then we just got on the road about a month ago it's been about three and a half weeks now which is it's wait you've been on the road for three three and and a half half weeks weeks. (laughs) my floor's not done what do you mean (laughs) we had to get on the road we were like we got to get the fuck out there that is funny i did not know that (laughs) So nice. I've found that my best ideas, especially <laughs> for music man. or <laughs> journaling or whatever, it happens in that fucking seat. I'm sitting there. Oh and I yeah. Think about it. Like, so, like I need a I need a method where I'm on the uh, like here and I maybe like a tape player or something that yeah. I just keep next to me so I can pick it up and just talk Yo, into it when I'm doing that's it. That's get your get your phone with voice mm-hmm. memos. Yeah. That's me like on I've the voice memos it. all all the time when I'm Some driving. Some of the best lyrics I've ever come up with happened yeah. right there in that seat. And I'm like oh, man, <laughs> one time I was driving to Vegas with with a friend of mine, a non-bus friend in the back and uh she was like <laughs> she was like are you like she sees me like going and fucking my phone every once in a while and I'm like I'm like turning the voice memos on and then I'm talking into it like while I'm driving <laughs> she's like are you writing a song right now while you're driving <laughs> like it's it like late at night <laughs> and the roads weren't that good it was kind of icy and and I was like uh maybe <laughs> but that day I that song was maybe one of the first songs in my life where like I wrote way more material than I mm. even could put in one song. Like it, if you I just like, go. if I did, if I took like that verse the way it was, like I probably wrote enough for like eight verses. If I took that the way it was and just like played the whole song all the way through, it'd probably be like eight minutes. Seriously, it was just like a giant monstrous piece <laughs> of tech because I had a just Rhapsody, great truly. ideas. I'm just sitting there driving and I'm yeah. and I'm just like I'm following one highway for like. 170 miles so i don't i don't i'm not like i have to think about anything and there's not that many other cars on the road i'm just stay like, awake that's the plan <laughs> yeah yeah but that kept me awake i was like oh my gosh i had all these crazy ideas was a, that was a great song so yeah that's uh, the point of all this is write music while you're um driving that's yep. a really Voice memos i've yeah. got to start immediately yeah today we're, we're get creative to while you're driving so. in fact <laughs> just put your microphone right like dangling right in front of your face and yep. just like and go and like, have your little laptop on your lap and right. just record <laughs> songs while you're driving too yeah. yeah totally yeah i definitely want to upgrade i want it to be like my uh my cockpit you know yeah. i wanted to have a place for my phone to sit where i can like see my my gps or something and like sure i, I haven't quite figured i need a cup holder i don't even have a cup holder over there how am i supposed to sip anything water or juice you know yeah you don't you don't sip water or juice yeah i just have like a water <laughs> bottle i always keep in my lap when i'm driving mm-hmm. but that is important so then how long have you been on the road i just i just had my one year anniversary on, uh, very cool. on Never January, heard yeah, anniversary. I, like I mean, obviously it's a bus, but yeah. bus, bus, bus anniversary just doesn't really roll off the tongue mm-hmm. the same way. No, it seems gross. I don't want to talk about yeah. your bus anniversary. Bus anniversary, <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> not right. But uh, yeah, it was January sixteenth uh, in twenty twenty two was my was my day that I set off. So now, what is it like February? It's oh, so mm-hmm. it's like a year and a month now. Yeah. Damn, that month flew by. But yeah, uh, we 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 were in Hakumba for that Van Jam event, and and we all had like a little little chocolate covered strawberries that we toasted for my anniversary. It was great. But yeah, you one say we. Who are the people that you've it, been roaming it, with? Yeah, a bunch of people. A bunch of people I met at at um at Van Jam uh, that event. That was like yeah, it was January thirteenth through the sixteenth. That was a really cool event uh, at Stay Nomadic, uh, and then right after that. Um, a bunch of those people came to Schooly, uh, met up with a bunch of those people from Schooly. A lot of them had met each other at this event called Northwest Nomads in Oregon. Uh, and actually, Ashley and Jordan, who run Northwest Nomads, are here. It's an awesome event. You should totally go. I've never been, but everyone says it's awesome, so <laughs> I'm I'm going for You're sure. Going. You're going. You know, I, everyone met there, and then it's like, I just, 
I, I feel like I know all these people and they all know each other because of Northwest Nomads. And it just seems like a really cool event. Like everything I've heard about it just sounds awesome. Um, for any nomadic people, yeah, it's in like Bend, Oregon area, like mid-September. So definitely show up if you can. I'm definitely learning that if you <laughs> don't want to be alone in this like bus oh van God. life you don't have to you be you do not have to there's, there's like so many people there's so many people even and just like hanging out with somebody for a month you're like posted up at a different couple different places yeah. and hanging out with mitch for what seems like for mitch a while is now sweet and there's <laughs> just like a whole community of people like if you are out there and you want to live in a bus you want to live in a van you want to just like be nomadic hell if you want to just pack up your prius Mm -hmm. And get a. I've seen a dude living in his Prius, just packed up a little pop up tent in the back. Beautiful. Got his little bed in there. He had his dog with him. He had a little fridge. He had everything. And you take what's Prius. important to you. You take, yeah, you take what matters. That's what minimalism is. It's, you know, it's what, what sparks joy in your life. Um, and for me, experience sparks joy. Like going out, meeting people, people spark joy for me. It's experience over object. That's the heart of minimalism. You are chasing that freedom, those like, uh, you know those those fun uh, uh, encounters with people and the and the the hiking and the nature and it's like all those things that you want to do, um, those experiences those that's so much more valuable than you know just like shit just stuff in your house totally yeah we we had a three bedroom two bath house before this Ooh. that we lived in for a year <laughs> and we slowly filled it with everything i mean we would consider yeah. ourselves maximalists truly like ev <laughs> with her being an artist it was like every yeah. day we were picking up a new piece of art uh from off the side of the road or at a coffee shop or whatever or she was creating something and we'd stick it on the wall and so it was just like every bit of that house was filled yeah it took us five months i'd say to like get rid of everything to get us to this point and yeah. I, I still feel like we have a ton we're gonna slowly get rid of stuff as we live on yeah. it mm -hmm. and gain yeah. more stuff and um, but I've watched that, like, a lot of people who live nomadically, they really do use every bit of the space they do have. Yeah, you got to do you got to do that. Yeah, especially coming from living in a house, you get used to all that space. And you're like, ooh. I, I mean, I ooh. have weird <laughs> things in my bus that are just, like, little extra, like, every little extra piece of square footage I can get. But, yeah, it's, um, I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever read the blog, the minimalist.com, they, uh, Josh and what's his name for the minimalist, they, they, uh, they do a bunch of like talks about minimalism. They're always going out and doing public speaking and they, they have their blog and they wrote, wrote a book. And, um, one of the things that they said once in an interview was this, they were talking about this guy who came up to them after one of their speech and speeches and was like, yo, I really like what you're saying, but like, here's the problem. I love books. Like I have just shelves and shelves of books. I have hundreds of books. I love, I love how they feel. I love the smell of the pages. I mm. love, I love the spine on, on my hand. Like I just like, I love books so much, like all the different, all the different like sources of knowledge. And they're like, Whoa, they just stopped. him. like, bro, you don't, you don't have like, keep your books. Yeah. Like, it sounds like that brings a lot of joy for you. Yeah. Like keep those, you know, hold on to what, what you love. It's like, we're not saying get rid of everything that you've ever loved. Totally. We're saying, pick those things out. Right. You know, if you love books. Yeah. And you want to live in a bus. Get a build a big ass bookshelf. Like I, if I wanted to, I could have built a bookshelf in my bus. I had extra room, and I maybe I will, maybe I just will. I love books too, <laughs> but it's like where you are putting your value, and and right. a lot of it is like things that that give you more opportunities. Like obviously my music equipment. Like of course I'm going to take that. Like that's Absolutely. that's for me to record. This that's is one of the first things I built in here was like yeah. the studio. Like a little we studio. Didn't, Absolutely. We didn't even have anything i was like have your this stuff is, ready this is going right here and this is beautiful <laughs> and now we're here recording a podcast love it and it's that's like that is you know you you pick the things that you value that those things that spark joy and and then being in a rig that moves you're able to go and chase those experiences gotta just have your bed when you're ready to call it a day yeah. it's a good good thing well, to that's have the craziest <laughs> thing about schooly palooza is like you, you know like no matter like where you are you party too hard at school it's like you're Imagine being at a party and you just know that you can just walk home anytime. Yeah. Like, it's never like that. Like, you go to college parties, you, you all of your friends pile in a car and you drive all the way out to wherever. And then you're all there and you're like, who's driving back? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> no, nah. you just like, you park all around each other yep. and then you party. And when you're ready to These go cute home, little, you're like, 
diesel circles. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> all right, I'm walking home, everybody. And then you just like going back to our neighborhood. Bus. Yeah. I heard uh, someone call it a street. They're like, yeah, down the street. And I was like, down we literally street. created streets overnight. <laughs> yeah. <Like. laughs> That's so true. <laughs> we made the streets. We are the streets. We are the streets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful community. It's really like. There, I mean, I have nothing but good things to say about it. I'm sure there's like, it, uh, obviously, everything has its hardships, but like right. the things that you get out of it are so valuable, and the community is so precious, and there's just like really great people, and they all come together and make really beautiful stuff happen. And uh, I don't know why yeah. I had this idea that, and you don't even know the half of it. You've only been here three months. That's three it. Three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's something that I immediately. A, like knocked out of my sense quickly was yeah. like I don't think like do I even know like if there's musicians doing this if they're not like on tour yeah. or like how good can musicians be if they don't have a lot of stuff is like they're really good like wait 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 you've got all the things you yeah. need and you're only gonna get better because you've minimalized to the things that you sure, know the things you need right yeah right so you you wait you started like right before schoolie. Didn't you? That was our first trip. We literally left. To schoolie. Because that was me too. Days. But last year. Oh, shit. So oh, shit. my <laughs> first yeah. event, I left Pretty on January cool. 16th. Schoolie started on January 21st. I Holy left from shit. Wisconsin. So I got from from uh, Wisconsin to Arizona where Schoolie was in five days. Oh, yeah. We did it in four. We beat you. <laughs> from where north carolina Asheville, north carolina <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah see that so you had like the same experience but for me that. it was last that. year but yeah Hell yeah that was the that was my first event it was my everything and all the people i met all the experiences that came this whole year literally my entire life has like started from schooly palooza and i'm so glad we started yeah. it that way because yeah. i needed to because you met community. people yeah yeah, that's a good way to do it. If yeah. you're thinking about like getting a bus, finish it in January and yeah. then go to school. That's yeah. a good way to start. Or don't finish it. Just say fuck the floors. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> just pull up. Yeah, yep. I love that. I mean, we literally put our propane together in in the parking lot of school. Or in the yeah, in the a field. lot of people do. Well, then the the thing is, then there's people who know what's up. Like mm-hmm. there's people to help you who yep. like know how to do everything. As long as you're not afraid to ask those questions. Yeah, too. absolutely. You gotta, you gotta be. Hey, everybody, everybody, uh, everyone out there who has ever lived in a rig, you know that you get to you get to an event like Schoolie, and the first thing everyone's asking each other is, "Hey, bro, so how do you shit in here? <laughs> 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 so where does that go? How does that work out?" <laughs> and they are like ready to help. I remember I didn't have my bathroom set up at all at Schoolie last year. I just because I it's the same for me. I just finished my bus. Like it was just like the paint was drying as I I'm driving. It. I love it. And then like I pull up. And uh, I met these wonderful people. We spent a night together. And then I remember one of my friends came in the first, like the first night, like just like brand new person. It's like, hey, uh, so what's your bathroom situation in here? And I was like, oh, I don't really have one. And they're like, okay, well, let's, let's fix that. Let's, let's, you know, let's, let's get that done. <laughs> like, like, let's get that ready to go. And that's important. That's huge. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. But I, I love that. I love that schooly people just like, we're talking. It, 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 every conversation ends up you talking about shit. That's yep. just how it goes. That, that's how you know you're getting close to people when you yeah. start talking about shit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. S- start talking about all kinds of shit, but mostly shit. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spe- speaking of, of which, we, we don't have a bathroom. We do, but we don't. Um, we're slowly getting it together. It, it feels, yep. it nah, feels that's how it goes. comfortable enough to actually go now, which is cool. But I had my first real number two in the bus at Schoolie, yeah. and I wasn't prepared because no, I too. didn't think about it being a thing because i'd been in my grandfather's parking yeah exactly there, you know? you're always by bathrooms and yep, stuff totally th- eventually you get to schoolie and it's like this isn't like an event that's you know like isaac came through we with porta potties very which lucky huge. to have porta potties that was yeah nuts. that was really that was like nuts. a big um you know but that wasn't there last year and like that usually isn't there and that's like it, it's supposed to be self-sustainable and you realize like oh like how self-sustainable is my rig but that is I think it's good to encourage people to get there because mm-hmm. it is amazing to just like be out in literally the middle of nowhere. Right. No in whatever one is around vehicle you, you live in. And it you got matter. you got it down. Like you mm-hmm. you got you got a bathroom for yourself, you got like water for yourself, you got somewhere to keep your food cold. Like you learn how to be self sustainable. And that's so powerful. Yeah. So powerful. No, you know, it's the great. One thing I, s- I still haven't figured out is um 
like I still want to do the things I did when I lived in a house like uh, composting is really important sure. to us. So we're still trying to figure out how we can keep our veggies and scraps, food stuff separate and get those to a place where we can dispose of them properly um, yeah. along the road. Because you never know where you're going to be or sure. how close you're going to be to something like a compost facility or something like that. Yeah. And recycling. Because a lot of times we throw away our trash and we're just like at a gas station. So we just throw it all away together. And I'd love to start being able to separate compost, recycling, and my normal landfill yeah. garbage. That's a big one for me. You're and a I bigger I man than I. That's great. I love out. that. <laughs> I haven't figured it out. I mean, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. But I there's resources out there. I am draining water at all times. My my yeah. stop for my gray tank um, <laughs> was snapped off, and so we just drip water. We just ah. pee down the road at all at all all times. Nice. Yeah. It is what it is. Well, man, I think this has been a really great show. I'd love for you to wrap us up with one more song. We'll go ahead and uh, maybe do some some conclusions. So, like, this is Cream Base Bus again, you guys. This is the Cream Base Radio, Cream Base Sessions. We haven't figured it out, but we'll Extra figure it out. Extra creamy. Extra creamy. Mm-hmm. Saucy. And this is CJ Love. You can find his... Anything really he's doing. You said you've got the Jazz Wagon. That's your Instagram for the bus if people are interested in that. And yep. CJ is love on Instagram for your personal page. That's me. Yep. CJ is love. That's pretty much where you can find everything. I just, I got a TikTok going just recently. Okay. We're going to we're gonna get you on TikTok. I would love to be able to do this. I, I don't have enough followers to live stream yet. That'd be I, great. I love this. This is, this gives me so much of the passion that I knew I wanted to be involved in music without the the pressure of playing in front of people <laughs> as I get other people to play in front of people for me. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the one. Do it. I, I don't know. Um, I was going to play I was going to play that song but I don't know. That's a sad song. I feel like I I just I excel at sad songs. Maybe I'll play this one instead. It's a little different. Should I say hi? I don't know just how to write these stupid letters anymore. It's been so long. I last spoke with you, my dear I'm sorry that it's taken All this time For me To say to you That you're perfect And I hope you're doing fine the intro for I hope it made you laugh I hope you liked that line Cause if I'm being frank This isn't my first draft I wrote this letter many times before Much more stupid references I'm sure or erase marks but it shouldn't be this hard for me to say to you that you're lovely 
called Dear Stranger 